addition of the first asset I will call A. It's probably the, first, the only asset I will call A that is going to be added. Fatty asset. Fatty asset I will call A. So an asset I will call A is going to be added there to the S I protein. So this comes in. The CoA goes off. And assist the attachment of the acetal group there. So your end product would look like this ACP. CH3. And there, where there is a cysteine, which has the theo group, will be there. This is what is going to happen. This reaction is catalyzed by one of the catalytic activities of, fatty, of the enzyme fatty acid synthase. In fact, this one is called acetal CoA SCP trans acetate. Acetyl CoA SCP trans acetate. Other books call it acetyl CoA SCP acetyl trans acetate. This is an enzyme. This is a catalytic activity of the enzyme fatty acid synthase. It attaches acetyl group onto the acetyl protein to produce that. The next reaction, the malonyl CoA will be added. So, there is a, so, not really. The next reaction you have to notice is that this acetyl group would move to the temporary coding site. It's what you're going to be seeing often. It will move from the SR protein to the temporary coding site so that this part is free. Steam CH3, SR protein, SH3. So that becomes free. The next reaction, allow me to remove this. The next reaction is that a malonyl group is going to be added there. And this malonyl CoA would come in. So the malonyl CoA comes in like that. A CH two H. Remember, this carbon dioxide that is there is the one that was added by acetyl CoA carboxylase, right? So the CoA would come off, and this malonate group attaches there, or the malonate group will attach there. The end product will look like this. Sixteen. This alkyl protein will then have this is what would happen. The enzyme that will catalyze this reaction is actually called Malonyl A SCP Transacinase. Is that okay? Yeah. What is it for Basically, this is going to be an acetyl ACP. Yeah, because there's an acetyl group attached to ACP. So, for this next reaction, where I'm bringing malonyl for A, this is one of the repeating reactions you are going to be seeing. And that's why we are saying malonyl for A is the activated load of carbon atom. Because you will be seeing malonyl for A is coming in repeatedly. Is that okay? So, 
Once you have this, the next reaction is a condensation reaction. And while the condensation reaction is occurring, the carbon dioxide comes off. Okay? And this is going to happen such that this carbon dioxide comes off, CO2 comes off, this acetyl group attaches there, from there, condenses there, the end product is going to have the free holding site and then you have an SCP which will have this part attached there, right? And that is going to be your end product because this acetyl group has been attached to there and the carbon dioxide comes off. This is the condensation reaction that we talk about. And the end product has a keto group on carbon number three. One, two, three, or on the beta carbon. So this end product, Seko, who asks, is a beta keto. SL, ACP. Is that clear? Beta keto, SL, ACP. The enzyme which did this reaction is referred to as beta keto SL ACP synthetic. Beta keto SL ACP synthetic. It's a synthetic, not a synthetic. Why? There's no ATP involved in that reaction. Or there is no high energy molecule involved particularly. And what drives this reaction is because there was a carboxylation reaction initially by acetyl CoA carboxylase and then a decarboxylation by this reaction. Bond formation and bond breakdown occurring leading to this reaction being powered and causing the condensation reaction to occur. Yeah? So, the second reaction, where? The this one? Yes. yes. Well, the, the, the SH here. Okay, so basically this attaches to the PO. So you want me to be showing the S then CH. So you want me to show the S then attach C, whatever? The same thing is there. Actually, there is a C, there is an S here. It's attaching on the PO group. Yes. All right. The next reaction is that this beta keto SL is going to undergo its first reduction reaction. So one, you have seen the first condensation reaction. The next thing you're going to see is the first reduction reaction. So this will get reduced. The reduction is going to be done with the help of NADPH plus H plus. Guys, remember, we talked about NADH initially and we talked about NADPH and I made emphasis to see, to say that NADH and NADPH are two different, they are not interchangeable, the function of NADH is to produce ATP in the electron transport chain, while NADPH is functioning in reductive biosynthesis. So it is reducing the growing SL chain to produce a fatty acid. This hydrogen and that hydrogen are going to attach there. The end product is actually going to have a hydroxyl group there. And it looks something like this. Search ACP, 
H2 O H H C H3 Is that clear? It gets a hydroxy group because this one had a double bond and a keto group there. And then the hydrogen, two hydrogens coming, one attaches there, the other one attaches there. It forms a hydroxyl group on carbon number three, or the beta carbon. This is a beta hydroxy ether. Right? This is a beta hydroxy ether. And it is formed by the reduction of the beta keto. So the name of the enzyme is substrate plus the name of the reaction. So the enzyme is going to be called beta keto SLACP reductase. It's reducing a beta keto SL. Right? And the product is a beta hydroxy SL SLACP. Not. The error I'm not mostly seen with the students when you ask them to mention just these enzymes is that they will be calling them dehydrogenase. They won't be mentioned in the SCP. Guys, the SCP is actually part of the name of the enzyme. And then there is no dehydrogenase in here because it's not an oxidation reaction, it's a reduction reaction. So you only see reductase. Is that okay? After all, we said you are going to see a condensation reaction, you are going to see a reduction reaction, a dehydration reaction, and then you also see another reduction reaction. So the next reaction here is a dehydration reaction. Next reaction, dehydration. Water comes out. This hydroxy group comes off, this hydrogen comes off, leading to formation of a double bond there. Product, okay, allow me to move this down here. And then you see that the end product will have that SH, SCP, and then it will have. A double bond there. Where is the double bond? Carbon number one, carbon number two. Trust me, this similar reaction in the reverse, you will see it when the fatty acid is being broken down. We are seeing a reduction, you will see an oxidation. We are seeing a dehydration, you will see a rehydration. You see that? It will be basically the opposite of this. So it will be pretty easy for you to understand synthesis and turn it against, turn it away from uh, breakdown. So this here is an inner CoA. So from a beta hydroxy, you have an inner ACP, right? not an inner CoA, but inner ACP. Therefore, this was dehydrating a beta hydroxy ether. The enzyme therefore will be a beta hydroxy ether ACP dehydratase. Dehydrating. It's a dehydratase. <laughs> Removing water. Dehydrating. Removing water from a beta. Hydroxy SLACP. So beta hydroxy SLACP dehydrates, producing a beta enol ACP. Finally, the next reaction would involve another reduction reaction. This NADP H plus H plus. NADP plus this hydrogen, that hydrogen will attach here, 
that double bond and that double to break that double bond, and the product would actually have a saturated fatty acid. And ACP with saturated fatty acid. Which is a beauty. Alright? This is a saturated fatty acid. And explains how this chain has grown by the two carbons which came in from the acetal group and then the two carbons which came from the nanodal group. For beta oxidation to continue, for fatty acid synthesis to continue, what would happen is that it has to receive two other, <coughs> two other carbons from a nanodal group. Excuse me. How would that happen? First thing, what we have here, what we have here, this structure here, this one here is very similar to this one. Do you see that? Except this one has two carbons, this one has four. So the next reaction would be this, since it moved there, this one would move there. Is that clear? To free the ethyl carrier protein. Like that. Except what would be there would have four carbons. The next reaction, a mononal for a will attach. Here we have this fatty ethyl with four carbons attached there. Right? And here we have a mononal for a. And condensation reaction would occur to produce the fatty ethyl with six carbons. Then it is going to be reduced, dehydrated, and then it is also going to be reduced again to have fatty acid with six carbons. The next reaction will be this, it's like that, except it will have six carbons, and it will keep on growing by two carbons continuously until you have a whole large molecule of um, a whole large molecule which has 16 carbons. By the way, the enzyme catalyzing this reaction is actually reducing an inner. So it is inner ACP reductors which produces the butyrate. It will keep on growing until it contains a palmitol group attached here, which is a fatty acid with 16 carbons. Then, the last reaction would be to remove that fatty acid by theoretic cleavage, use of water, and this is going to be done by Palmitol Theoesterase, which is also an enzyme activity of fatty acid synthase. So, fatty acid synthase has these seven enzyme activities it has the beta keto SCP synthase activity. Beta keto SL SCP reductase activity, beta hydroxy SL SCP dehydratase activity, inal SCP reductase activity, palmitol theoesterase activity, and then the first two, which is the acetal CoA SCP, uh, acetal CoA SCP transacidase, and the maladal CoA SCP. Transacidase, seven enzyme activities. Is that okay? Guys, this is not okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Yeah, this is the, you know, the way the uh, saturated and unsaturated. So, so, like, 
so, that's a very good question. What we have done now is explain how a fatty acid is going to be formed and it will be formed as a saturated fatty acid. The process of desaturation of fatty acid is done by enzymes called desaturases, which will basically be desaturating a fatty acid at specific sites. Other ones would involve using some of these uh, uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids, which will actually come in as essential fatty acids, linoleic acid and linolenic acid, and will be used to form the long chain fatty acids which are actually saturated. Okay? So that is the process of saturation of fatty acids. So the process of fatty acid synthesis occurs like this. It elongates in that manner. Once it has formed, in this case, then it will undergo the different kinds of reaction which involve desaturation and maybe some further elongation as required. Any other questions before I say this? Any other questions? Does this make sense? Yes. Of course it doesn't. If it doesn't make sense, <laughs> yes? Yes, sir. You say it's a fat as well as triacid Yes. So after that formation, you form fatty acids? Yes, you form the fatty acids, and then these are the ones that are actually going to, to lead to formation of triacid cells. Yeah, so these three fatty acids are going to be combined with the molecule of glycerol and then ultimately you have a triacyl glycerol. In fact, some of the things you need, basically this would be the, a little bit more demanding part of understanding this. The other parts such as the desaturation, the other parts such as the formation of triacyl glycerol from the fatty acids will become a lot more straightforward. Okay? So, on further reading, go and read on how triacyl glycerols are actually formed and stored, for example, so that the next time we come, we'll just come and discuss directly on the circumstances which will need to break down of these fatty acids in beta oxidation. Is that okay? So that you also have some parts for on reading. Guys, any questions?